hardest job actually it's very 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 hard yeah because most of the porters they don't even have equipment to help them on the mountain so they get suffered with uh, so many things having a snow top mountain in africa it's it's very surprising and uh some people they want to make it because it's so high it's about 5900 and something meters so they they feel like uh, self-enjoying me. My name is Ali, and um, I've been working as a guide for like three years. Yeah, before being a guide, I used to work as a porter. Yeah, and uh, actually, it's very hard working as a porter. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is uh, my hot house. This is where my grandmother used to live. Yeah, and uh, I was born here actually. I was born here, and yeah. Right now, we are building a new house, but still, we keep the memory. I decided to be a guide uh, because working as a porter, you know, you don't get paid that much. And besides that, uh, you know, tipping is not good for porters. Some people, they know how to tip, but not most of them, you know. Yeah, it took me uh, at least one and a half years to get the certificate. Yeah. And uh, since I'm working as a guide, I find it very very interesting besides because uh, I meet a lot of people from all over the world you know and uh, we do exchange a lot of ideas you know and besides that I love the mountain. You have several things that happen here on Kilimanjaro. You have companies that are paying the proper wages, charging the proper prices. Then you also have companies because they want to get business, they lower their prices significantly so that they get climbers coming with them. But what the climbers don't realize is that when they pay for such a low price, it's actually at a consequence to the crew and the crew's not getting the proper salary. Or you have companies that charge the proper prices but still exploit their crew and don't pay the proper wages. I was born in this village, which is called Mabogini. Yeah, this is where I was born and raised until I was seven years old. And then um, I had a chance uh, from my uncle, who actually uh, decided to take me to the capital, where is Dar es Salaam. And uh, I went to a school, and then after that, uh, I came to work here in Moshi. And then uh, when I was here in Moshi, because I didn't perform very well in my education, the, uh, the only thing that you could do if you're not you know, qualified, you know. You can only uh, do as a porter, you know, because it doesn't take any, any qualification, just your skills, you know. We have information for the porters in Swahili, so it's essentially how they can borrow clothing from us. So we tell them that they have to bring an item of value as a deposit. We also want a photo of them. They don't have to bring that the first time, but we like to have photos of them on record with their contract sheet. And so it explains the procedure to borrow clothing from us. It also tells them that um, we teach classes. I just had to take down our Porter Rights class because we're having this whole debate about the minimum wage and the Porter Union doesn't like that we say that it's at least 8,000 T shillings. So for now, we're just going to remove that Porter Rights information sheet. So this is just an information board for the porters. When a ski resort changes their uniform, they essentially don't want their uniform in the country. They don't want it to be worn on the ski mountain. So we have uh, an association with the National Ski Association in the U.S., which has a nonprofit section which is called Sharing Warmth Around the Globe. 
and so we're one of their recipients. We do interviews with the partner companies here. We have meetings with the partner companies. Um, porters are welcome here. Climbers are welcome here. We have special information sheets to give to the climbers. We have a list of the partner companies for them. We have a list of tipping recommendations and how to tip, tipping procedures. Um, and so that's essentially what we do here in the office. I find it sometimes really difficult for me, especially way to the top because it's more cold and also it's like frozen and strong wind and everything is terrible all the way from the base camp to the top, but unless otherwise that is fine for me because it's my professional. You can see amazing potters carry all the stuff all the way up and some difficulty path, they carry like 25 kg each potter. Yes, and uh, that also is more difficult. How do they walk with the raining, with all the stuff carried on their head? I had a big business in Perth, and uh, I sold that and um, sort of um, yeah, had enough money to go and do what I wanted to. So I decided to take the children. I took my other son three years ago. We came up here and took him along. And Jivan's now 11 and we're going with, with Jivan to the top now as well, yes. To, to come to Kilimanjaro, it is, it is a, a big challenge, um, uh, but not too much for, for somebody like, like Jivan. It's not like uh, dangerous or anything like that. We know about mountain sickness, so we'll manage, uh, try and manage that as well as we can. So there's no ways that we would be able to get to the top carrying all our, our equipment ourselves. So. Um, uh, yes, it's, it, it is absolutely vital, uh, the work that they, that they do here, you know, and, and the cooking and everything like that. There are a lot of people who are waiting just to get that chance to climb the mountain. No matter how much they get paid, they don't care, you know. Yeah, even if they're supposed to, to be paid $100, if you give them $20, it's okay for them. Yeah, because they're facing bigger poverty. Yeah, so some companies, they take it as an advantage, you know, yeah, because, like, you know, I want to pay you, so if you don't want, there's like a hundred people there waiting. Some of them work and only get their tip money, that's all that they get, but they do it because they want some money. People go and climb, they get hired at the gate, and they don't even know what the company pays, but they do it because they figure at least they'll get a tip from the climb, and they might not even get their wage. Now we're finding it's just a few that have the courage. So I was at the gate and it, there was an incident that came up and we called the crew together and there were supposed to be 10 porters. And so we pulled all of the crew together and it was one porter in the back of the, in the, back of the group that said, excuse me, mama, we're only seven. And if that porter did not have the courage to say that, we would have never uncovered this thing. And so now, unfortunately, we're finding it too much. It's a common practice. But it was that one porter who had the courage because otherwise they keep quiet because they're afraid they won't get hired again, they won't get any money. And the saddest thing I find here is there's no government institution overseeing the proper standards and enforcing it. In my opinion, the establishment of a minimum wage is really just a joke because nobody's enforcing it. Hey, Na sina mpango kukundirea na upota, ndakiwa taniyo na miga hidi badai. E, na jisikia kawaida tu kwa sababu ni kazi ya mbondo inastahili kufanywa hivi. Kwa hata kama unachoka ni kawaida, tunamani na kila mtu anachoka, na kila mtu anajia na pata nguvu. Kwa hivyo unawana ni kawaida tu kwa sababu ni kazi ya mbondo na jia na ifani. Na najua ya wazima kuna kuchoka, na badai kuna kupumzika.
I'm very glad to see at the gate that they actually check how much weight they can carry because in many places in the world they don't check. I mean, we've walked in the Himalayas and they let people carry 35 to 40 kilos and these guys can carry 20 kilos maximum or 25 kilos maximum. So that's a very good thing, I think, from the, from the government here. From being here, having been here three years ago, the, the gate is much better organized this time around. So I think it's a big improvement. Um, and I, I, I don't think that they are being exploited. Um, of course, um, uh, we've walked in, in Nepal in the Himalayas, and it's a lot worse there, the situation for the, for the porters than for, for them, for, for, the, for the people here in Tanzania. You know, they're much better off. Actually, I've climbed with a porter once who died on a mountain, and it was very, very hectic, very hectic, yeah, because uh, we just talked in like uh, three hours before, you know, and it's because that uh, at the time I was I was in a company, I was being paid by a company. Right now, at least I'm trying to uh, to own my own company, you know, which is good, yeah. But uh, before, when I used to get paid, you know. So you can't do anything, you know. Yeah, but it was very hard because we, they used to, to, to make the potters carry a lot, a lot, yeah. And the other thing is that the, the tourists, some tourists, they don't appreciate the work that has been done by the potters. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very hard job, you know, that they do. basically met my expectations and it's actually exceeded my expectations in more ways than one. I did quite a bit of homework before I came. I, I know exactly how the landscape is going to look like, but seeing it in person is just amazing and nothing can just prepare you for seeing so many awesome plants and just meeting so many awesome people. I knew exactly what they were going to do. They were going to like set up our tents for us, cook for us, carry up the mountain for us. Um, but I did, I did, I was, I am aware of the, the welfare thing, the welfare issue and how they, they need to be tipped according to guidelines, like they're, they're tipping guidelines, guidelines to adhere to and stuff. Um, so I basically knew what to expect. Mimi nafurahi sana kwa ujumla naona raha sana kwa sababu kwanza wanavokuja wenyewe wanatupa si riziki kidogo lakini na inabidi watu angalie huko na huko kwa sababu bila wao tusingekuwa tunakuja huko sisi kwa tunafurahi sana wanavokuja ah kwa kweli bado sijaridhika yani ngeomba ni hata mtusaidie kidogo yani hata kidogo mshahara uwe juu kidogo kwa sababu sisi wengine tuna familia tunataka familia ni pesa na pesa ndio kama vitu tunavyoumia I'm sure there are some companies out there that, that are exploiting them. I think you get what you pay for and as a tourist, if you come to Kilimanjaro and you are prepared to pay only up to, let's say, $1,000, then you get what you pay for. You, the food may be compromised, the porters may, be, may not have as great a welfare as the ones from the better and more reliable companies. If your quota is hard because uh uh, first of all, they have no enough uh, equipment for trekking to Majara. Even my company, I'm, I'm not for sure, to be honest, I'm not paid 100% good salary because of my all of our company, I mean all of our tourists, are paid less to trek to Majara. When you tell them, I mean, clients to pay good for them, they say we have no money, we are still traveling this road, blah, 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 and we are still in the guard, so we cannot pay. Some of the companies, 
they give you the class, but they limit you the number of the crew they give you. They told you, I give you two class or one class, but you, you have to go not more than this number of the, of the crew. So uh, some of the company, they, maybe they give you two clans, and they give you maybe seven crew, including me as a guide. They, they told you, if you'll go more than seven, that's, if you'll take, it means that if you'll take extra porter, maybe eight crew, and you'll maybe to be eight crew, so you have to share your salary. So at the end of the trip, or at the beginning first, you have to tell your uh, crew that we are going eight. So the office said that we have to go only seven people. So if we are going eight people, we have to share this salary. It means that we have, to sh we have to find the salary for that someone who is extra, always what we do. And the, about the food, that is normal as well that uh, sometimes the food is not enough for the crew. You can see the crew, normally they, they take their own food, uh, their own bitings, especially for tea maybe, because there at the mountain they eat only one meal, one meal in, at the dinner. The meals, of course I'm still giving them breakfast and dinner. Yes, and uh, yes, the luggage is good. The luggage we just to see in the, how many kilograms will be there. So it's just less than 20 kilograms. And for them, it must be to have enough equipment, like a sleeping bag, rain, rain equipment, and mattress. I think they should get paid a lot more than what they are getting paid. Um, I think it's, what, $50, $60 or something like that in tips for seven days' work. I don't know if they're getting paid a salary from the tour groups either, but I doubt it. So, no, I, th I think these people are way underpaid for the work they do. I mean, they just have everything here when we're ready, you know. I mean, if we need any kind of help, they'll come and help us. Yalangu ni tora faeli revocatus kazi yangu mi nipotas mlima kilimanjaro na fei pali na po kazi na vokuwa nzuri. You know, back in America, you couldn't get anybody to do this amount of work, this hard of work, for $60 a week. It's just, it's unbelievable that there, there's actually somewhere in the world where this is still going on. They're not as bad as they used to be. I've heard stories from these porters about not just six years ago, they had to sleep in the caves, they didn't have tents, you know? I mean, all they get to eat is porridge, you know? They, yeah, they're, they're exploited. Nothing can be done without the porters. You know, they're like the backbone of everything. Yeah, they're like the backbone of the, uh, the tourists to reach to the top. You know, yeah, so uh, the Porters Assistance Project is helping much to change things, you know, and uh, like reducing the weight, you know, which is, which is good, you know. We, we had lots of uh, porters dying on the mountain because of carrying a lot of weight, you know. There are some companies which at least they're paying good to the porters. Yeah, at least they're paying good. But uh, most of the companies, they don't. I don't think if anybody likes to work as a porter. Yeah, I think it's just the beginning. Yeah, but there's so many, so many things to be changed. So many things. <laughs> Ewe nyoka, ewe nyoka, ewe nyoka,